Hello guys, uh, today we're going to learn about solving an equation using a graphing calculator and, and also learning how to graph something like this on your calculator. Um, I've got a standard quadratic equation here and uh, before I actually do it on my calculator I want to go ahead and just solve it with factoring so you kind of know where we're headed. Um, but uh, this one is a problem that's pretty easy to factor. Um, what multiplies to be x squared? Just an x and an x. And then for the minus 8, you'd ask the question, um, what multiplies to be negative 8 also uh, and adds up to be negative 4? Uh, that would be a negative 4 and a plus 2. So here your x would equal, you'd ask what makes this equal to 0 and what makes this equal to 0? Positive 4 or negative 2 because you'd set uh, x minus 4 equal to 0 and 4 would be the solution for that. Uh, also, x plus 2 would be set equal to 0. The negative 2 would be the solution to that. Uh, in factoring, I've got a different video about that, so I don't want to focus on that too much here. Um, I have a TI-84 Plus um, Texas Instruments, and um, it is the same as the TI-83. Um, pretty much they are almost the exact same calculator. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph x squared minus 2x minus 8. And I'm going to look for where the line crosses the x-axis. Um, because anytime you, uh, let me just draw this real quick. So if the zeros are 4 and negative 2, then it's going to look something like this. Uh, these points right here um, are the points 4 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0. And notice that we have the uh, uh, the y is 0, um, and uh, that is like this right here. y equals this and equals 0. So we want a, a place where we cross the x-axis is one of my solutions, essentially. Uh, so I'm going to turn this on, and you hit y equals right here. And then I'm going to type in x squared minus 2x minus 8. This is my x key right here x, the squared key is right here, minus 2x, and then minus 8, just like that. So I just type, this is the x key, x squared. Um, the minus and the negative are different, so make sure you do the minus here because the calculator will mess that up. Then you hit graph, right here, graph. And there's your solution, uh, or there's your graph. You can kind of see that it does cross at negative 2, and then it does cross at 4. But if you wanted to verify that yourself, you go to the calc menu right there. You push second, trace. Um, I guess one option is you can push the trace key, and you have this little cursor that moves around. And you could type like x equals negative 2, and then it tells you what the y value is. Sure enough, it's 0. You could type like x is, you know, 1, and uh, y is negative 9 way down there. And uh, you could type x is 3 and so forth. Um, if you go to second calc, what that does is it gives you the option to find the zero automatically. So I'm going to hit second calc, go down to find zero, which is option two. And then it says pick a point on the left. So here's, I'm going to look for that one right there, the four. You can use your left and right arrow keys to move the cursor around. And that looks good right there. That is on the left of the, my desired zero. So I'm going to pick that right there. Uh, and this little cursor, this little arrow comes up. I'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, what's on the right? Maybe something like that. And you have another arrow that comes up. It's kind of blocked. Uh, and now it says guess. And you're going to kind of move the cursor as close as you can to right there. And what the calculator is about to do is look for a zero, a, a, an intersection point with the x-axis between those two little arrows. So we'll just guess something kind of close. And um, sure enough, there's four, com four comma zero for you right there. Um, and then the same can be set over on that side. I can't really see the bottom of this, so if you went to the window feature right here, it says window. Um, go down to y is like, instead of minus 10 to 10, maybe we go to y is minus 15. This allows you to set kind of what, how big your window is. The x scalar and the y scalar are how often you count a tick mark. So I'll just maybe do count by fives. You can see now we're going down lower and we're counting by fives on the y axis, still ones on the, on the x axis. If you want to go back to standard, Go to zoom, 
standard right there, zoom six, and it takes you back to that standard 10 by 10 window. Uh, I want to do one more. I want to do one that's kind of kind of weird. I want to do log of x plus x equals one. This one I have no idea how to solve. There's no nice factoring to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take away one from both sides, and we're going to get everything on one side, zero on the other, and we're just going to graph this and then see where it crosses the x-axis. So we're going to do log, that's log right there, x plus x minus 1, hit graph. And I can see that I have a crossing point right there somewhere. I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit because I'm having trouble seeing it. So maybe we go to window, and let's maybe do like x is like minus 2 to 3, and then y can be like minus 2 to I'm just making something up that's kind of closer to that middle point. And sure enough, there's my crossing point. So I'm going to go to second calc, ask it to find a zero, and uh, left bound maybe right here. That looks good. What's on the right bound? Maybe right there. And then guess. It doesn't, I mean, you just have to be kind of close. So that looks good. And uh, then it turns out to be one, you know, believe that, believe it or not. So that's my answer is one comma zero. And we can check that, I guess, if you want to. Um, but if you have any kind of equation of any kind, if you're on the SAT or the ACT taking that or some other standardized test, if you don't know how to solve an equation, then move it all over to the left side and get zero on the right. And then if you graph it on your calculator, uh, you can use this process to find the answer. Uh, you guys have a good day.